Hey there, Amanda from The Happy Homestead. Today's video is going to be uh, one of a three-part series, and it's gonna involve some raw milk and some cheese. So, and this is not a how-to video. <laughs> clarify that from the beginning I've never what I'm gonna be doing in these three videos I've never done before so this is more like a how's it gonna work how's it gonna turn out so the first thing that I got is this mozzarella and ricotta cheese making kit and I bought this from the New England cheese making supply company so I have always loved cheese <laughs> most people do um, who doesn't really right and so I thought it'd be kind of fun to try to make some homemade mozzarella and so I guess it was a week and a half ago I was at the Homesteaders of America Tennessee conference on Rory Feek's farm and I got to meet so many great people um, within the homesteading community it was just such a wonderful event but while I was there that's when I bought this by the way the night that I was back in my hotel room, I was like, hmm. So I went on the website and bought it while I was in my hotel room. Um, so anyway, what I learned though from Jill Winger of the Prairie Homestead, <laughs> my daughter's here today. What I learned from Jill Winger is that with one gallon of milk, you can technically make Hi. butter, mozzarella cheese, and ricotta Hi, cheese. Thank you, bye. <laughs> Go okay. finish your breakfast. Okay, mama. Um, and so, yeah, so what you take is you take a gallon of whole milk. Now, I found a local dairy really about, I think, 20 minutes from my house, and they sell A2, A2 milk, which is what I prefer to use. Um, we don't drink a lot of milk, but I do make kefir, and I, I will drink that and use that in recipes. And then I just like to have that quality milk source just for recipes and whatnot but the a2a2 is what we do prefer so i found an a2a2 dairy um an a2a2 by the way you might i'm not gonna try not to keep saying that over and over but what that means is it has actually less lactose within the milk so it could be easier digestible for some people who maybe not be able to drink or have milk products normally in their diet so that's what that means it's less lactose easily digestible and so I had heard, right, so you take a gallon, you skim off the cream, and you make butter with that. You can make whipped cream with it too, but you can make butter with that. Then you take the whole milk and you make mozzarella cheese. Then you take the whey that is left over from the mozzarella and you make ricotta cheese. Now ricotta can be made with either whole milk ricotta or the way, and obviously I'm gonna do the way. So I am gonna take one gallon and try to make those three things. Again, never done this before. <laughs> so I thought it'd be fun to try it and bring you along for the ride. Uh, and yeah, we'll be reviewing this product as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the butter. Um, I have skimmed most of the cream off, but I'll show that to you. And that, that's the first video today, is the butter. I wanted to clarify when I was talking about the, the raw milk and getting from a local dairy, um, what was important to me was that it was A2A2. But also, I don't know if it's just as important or really even more important, is that they are pastured cows. The cows are eating grass, they're eating hay, they are not eating grain. Um, so the farmer that I bought from, um, just a small farmer, not a, not a big conglomerate, and he only has two cows, and I was able to go tour his farm. He was so kind, and he took me through a tour of everything. I got to see all the animals, I got to see how he does things, how the animals are living, what they're eating, and it made me feel that much more comfortable. So I really think it's important to note, and, and I forgot to note that prior, is that pastured cow milk if you're gonna have cow milk in your kitchen, pastured cow milk is best. Um, try to avoid the GMOs, try to like the GMO corn and the feed and the grain, right, that some farmers feed them because it's cheaper, it's easier. But pastured cows is not only better for the cow, it's better for our planet. Mama. Yeah, honey. Do you have a soft polka dot bunny? I have a soft polka dot bunny? Yeah. That's the microphone, lovey. Yeah, that looks like one, don't it? It looks like a bunny. 
I'm just trying to skim the cream off. So if you guys can see, I'm gonna show you. You see that cream line? I don't know if you can see that right here. So this is cream. This would be then be considered skim milk, but this is the cream. So I'm trying to get as much of the cream off for the butter. Now, if I don't, if I don't get all of it, that's okay, because then there's just some really good creaminess within the mozzarella too, right? So it's not a big deal, but. And the longer you leave it to sit, so this was milked uh, four days ago. And so the longer you leave it, the more cream will rise to the top. And what I've learned is that, you know, there's a trade-off with that because that's great because you get more cream, right? But the trade-off is, is that maybe your mozzarella won't be as creamy either. So it's okay to have a little cream left in. You can see that right there. Um, and I have more milk. This isn't the only thing for the mozzarella, but this, so the cream line here is all the way down here. It's hard to see, especially since I've just disturbed it a bit, but this is mostly all cream. So this will be our butter. So you have to find that sweet spot between, you know, having enough cream to make butter, but not taking all of it from your mozzarella. All right, let's make butter. So the first thing we are gonna do is take our cream, right? So I have one quart of cream. Now, when you're doing this, it doesn't necessarily matter how much you have because all you're doing is throwing it into a food processor. Well, that's what I'm using today. I think you could probably use a high-speed blender. You could also use a manual butter churner. I just don't have one of those. Um, so I'm doing a food processor. So when you're using a food processor, you do want to be careful not to fill above that liquid line max, right? That's like the max amount of liquid you can have in it without creating a total mess. So I'm doing a quart, which I think is gonna be perfectly fine. We'll see as I pour it in. And then all I'm gonna do is turn it on high speed. And so if you've ever made homemade whipped cream, it's just like that, right? You're gonna see it come into soft peaks, stiff peaks, and then if you ever do whipped cream and you go too long, it breaks, right? That's what we're looking for. We're actually gonna get to that breaking point to separate the buttermilk from the butter. So I have my daughter here with me to help. Okay, all right, so we've got our quart of cream. We're gonna put it in our food processor. Now, it also, the recipe also said to have it room temperature. It's not entirely room temperature. <laughs> it's the best I could do right now. <laughs> I got to put all of it in. Well, actually, we are at that liquid fill line, so I didn't get it all in, but I don't want to go any further. All right, so we're going to put the top on. Yeah. Press the on button. see okay I think we've got soft peaks kind of yeah so it's kind of like a a soft whipped cream right now Good thing this is for our family. 
so All right. good. Yeah, not quite hard peak yet, but we're getting there. Oh, it's starting to break. All right, so let me see if you guys can see this. Chicken duck, duck, duck. So if you can see, I don't know if you can. There we go, right here. You see how there's some liquid right there? It's starting yeah. to break. So we're gonna keep this going and we should be able to see it break between the buttermilk and the butter. Yeah, you see the liquid pooling up like the whitish liquid in the middle and the yellow butter. So the butter solids should come together. Well, come, a little bit come together, but they might be scattered throughout. And then you put them in a bowl and kind of press them together. And then you rinse it through cold water to get all that buttermilk out. See how the butter totally separated into the clumps and the white butter milk? I want to smell it. Yeah. You are crazy. All right, so now what we're going to do. Okay, I need a strainer. What is a strainer? Because we are going to save. Can you please get down? Sure, sir. Thank you. We're going to save that buttermilk. Now this is not cultured butter. This would be what would just be called um, sweet cream butter. All right, so we're going to strain out the buttermilk and then we're going to press those butter solids together. Oh my gosh, I, I'm like so surprised. I did not know how easy this would be. Literally never done this before, and I'm so excited. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is press that, but we got to rinse it through some cold water to make sure we get all the buttermilk. But in the meantime, I'm going to save this buttermilk. Look at that. Now go right into the refrigerator. It's truly amazing how many things you can get out of one gallon of milk. All right, so we're gonna take this to the fridge and rinse it with cold water while we press it together. And I believe the pressing movement is just supposed to release as much buttermilk as possible. Okay, so I think, so I know we're using cold water, right? So we don't obviously melt the butter. Alright, so I think what I'm doing is just like pressing it. Again, first time ever doing it, guys. <laughs> and then, you know, like kind of getting rid of some of that extra water. And I was told to just keep doing this until the water runs clear. I don't really want to lose some of those milk sol or those butter solids. Um, but you just keep pressing for the butter to all come together and it helps get that extra buttermilk out. I guess, I guess if there's any buttermilk left, right, that might, that might affect how long butter lasts in the fridge. That's what I'm thinking. That's why you're trying to press as much out. 
And so um, what I was trying to say earlier is that, yes, this is not cultured butter. If you wanted to make cultured butter, you'd have like a mesophiliac, uh, I think I said that word right, culture that you would add to your cream before you even began the process. And you'd let your cream culture for a day or two, and then you would do exactly what I just did. But I didn't do that. I'm just doing sweet cream butter. No culture. It is so hard to know if I'm doing this right. And this butter is so soft. Now I am going to um, add salt to it. I think. I think I am. Maybe not. I don't know. But I think the water is running pretty clear, don't you? I feel like it is. So then we're just gonna get this together and um, put it in the fridge. Guys, we just made butter. <laughs> Look at that. We just made butter. I am so excited. I honestly had no idea how easy that was. Now, if you have ever done it with a manual churn, please comment below. Cause I think the novelty of that would be fun. But I suppose if you were doing this often, then that novelty might wear off. <laughs> but this was fun for the first try. Um, yeah, so I got a decent amount. I'm not tasting it right now because I haven't even had my coffee yet. I don't, I don't really want to eat any butter. Now I do know people put butter in their coffee. What's that? Like a bulletproof coffee or something? I've never tried that. Okay. So I would say that was a success. Um, and I do have some cream left. So I actually think I'm going to repeat the process with the remaining cream and just get it used. And then um, I'll have even more buttermilk too. And then we'll just get started with the mozzarella for the second video. So yeah, I want you to try to make butter. Let me know what you think. Oh, and you do not have to use raw milk. I purchased the raw A2A2 milk because that's what I wanted. Um, I believe you don't ever want to use the ultra pasteurized milk. So when you go into the grocery store and you see some of the really big brands, nationwide national brands, just look on the bottom of the carton and it will say ultra pasteurized. Um, I would not recommend that because it's really killing everything and anything in it. And that's not necessarily good for cheese making process either. Um, so you either want to get the low pasture, like the raw low pasteurization or what they call vat pasteurized is also like a low pasteurization process. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But again, this was kind of my first time trying it. I want to hear what you think if you do it. Stay healthy, stay well, and we'll see you for video two when we make mozzarella.